The tiny community of King Island off the northwest tip of Tasmania has voted to push ahead with plans for the country's biggest ever wind farm. A community ballot has revealed 59% support for Hydro Tasmania to conduct a multi-million dollar feasibility study into a 200 turbine wind farm. It's a decision that's been made against the backdrop of a dwindling population, fewer jobs and closing businesses. The massive wind farm would generate about 2,400 gigawatt hours of electricity a year to be sent across Bass Strait by a high voltage underwater cable to the national electricity market. Hydro Tasmania says it could produce enough electricity to power a quarter of a million households, a huge chunk of the nation's renewable energy targets. But as Fiona Breen found out, the issue has divided the community. Friends and even families are no longer talking. On a wintry Saturday, a sporting battle pitches mate against mate, colleague against colleague, and even family against family. Get up there. Are you ready? For 1,500 King Islanders, the three-team footy competition stirs sporting passion. Today, it's grassy versus north. It's a tough, close match. Off the field, another battle has been simmering. Like football, passions have come to the surface. I'm against. Don't want any wind farms here to... Uh, they're just ugly, horrible things. I think the wind farms are a great idea for the island, um, even if it just goes to feasibility. I don't want to look at wind towers really, but if it's going to help out the island, well, we need it. King Island is in the roaring 40s. Its rugged coastline is a graveyard of shipwrecks driven ashore by the winds. Calm days are rare, and the wind blows at an average speed of 32 kilometres per hour. It's that consistent wind that Hydro Tasmania wants to harness, using 200 turbines costing $2 billion. The company has spent six months taking the proposal to the local community. We've taken a very different approach uh, in coming to King Island to have this conversation before doing a feasibility study, a different approach to take that taken previously and elsewhere for these kinds of projects. That was very deliberate to try and understand and I suppose to demonstrate that not all wind farm developments are the same. They don't have to be the same. And so we hope you would see that as a sign of our commitment to continue to work with you to ensure that this, if this goes ahead that there is an optimum outcome for the community. The community ballot has now been counted and the result was tight. Nearly 59% supported taking the 200 turbine wind farm proposal to the next stage, but there was only 10 or 11 votes in it. Hydro Tasmania had always said it needed at least 60% community support for it to go ahead. At an emergency board meeting this week, the company decided it was close enough. Well, certainly we're aware that, uh, that there are different views in the community and uh, we want to work with all sections of the community going forward about their concerns, as we've indicated. Uh, but we do feel that the survey result of 59% is a very strong uh, indication of community support to go forward to a feasibility study. The wind towers will be 150 metres high, from the base to the blade tip. That's three times the height of Australia's tallest lighthouse, here on the northern tip of King Island. No wind campaigners are angry. They say Hydro Tasmania has broken its promise. I believe they shouldn't have done. 
um, it was it was discussed earlier between the Tas Wind Consultant Committee and the um, and Tas Hydro the board in in the uh, town hall in a public meeting and that that's that's the figure that came up it was the 60 40 and it didn't quite get there but and they've chose to override it so no I think it's it's disappointing it's you hear of uh, stories that, uh, that you know they'll promise you the world and they'll give you this but nothing's in, in nothing's ever signed or on paper so you know do they they back down on other things as well the no wind group is concerned with the visual impact and the effects on health it's paid for a number of experts to visit the island you've brought in a, a sydney pr company that's fairly drastic oh yeah too right yeah, it hasn't been cheap either how much is it costing and who's paying uh, good question not going to answer it so not, not up front about how much? No, I'm not going to tell you how much, nor who's paying for it. Why is that? I don't plan to. <laughs> it's none of your business. I can tell you that the biggest part of this cost has been funded by a family who have representatives who live on this island. That's all I'm going to say. Push all you like from now on. The ABC has been told it's the Smith family led by Flight Centre co-founder Bill James. They own land on the island. It's likely the No Wind Group will continue its campaign against the project. Hydro Tasmania will now push ahead with a feasibility study. It plans to spend $7 million in the first year. For some in the community, it's a chance to get some answers. I think it's fantastic. I think King Island needs something to help it go ahead. And a feasibility study is the beginning of it. I can't find all the answers that I need to the questions I have about whether it's going to be a positive thing until we actually do more um, investigation. Personally, I don't really want the towers to go ahead, but it's reverse psychology. And if they, if they offer enough, I'll turn around and run with it because that means there's going to be uh, employment on our island and people are going to be successful in their businesses because we're all struggling at the moment and uh, you just don't like to see that. And eventually you find people leave. Beef farmers and dairy farmers are both split. The For others, it's a decision you know, it's that will struggling. cause further division in an already polarised community. This is an eight or ten year process from, from go to woe. It normally takes eight to ten years to get this up and running. It'll, it'll stop the island for eight to ten years. That's the issue. Uh, we, we're being told by Taswind we'll get a vote at each stage. So in another two years' time, there'll be another vote. That's what they've told us on whether or not to go ahead after feasibility. If it doesn't go through feasibility, if it's knocked back at that point, then we've lost two years. If it does go through, then you know, there'll, be, there'll be people on the island for sure who are still fighting it. King Island Mayor Greg Barrett is happy a feasibility is going ahead. It's been a tough six months. He's watched the passion spill over and the community divide. What's it been like as mayor of King Island in the in the past few months? Well, it's progressively got more difficult because uh, the longer this process has gone, the more divided the community has become, and uh, it hasn't been a pleasant place to live, I suppose. Yeah, lately, at times, he and the council have borne the brunt of public discontent. If I'd known that this was going to be how it turned out. I mean, as far as um, uh, you know, splitting the community, uh, I would have, I wouldn't have encouraged the, uh, the the discussion to happen. Really, the scale of the project has some islanders worried. It'll fracture our community. Uh, there are there are corporate farms on the island who could well take a lot of the um, a lot of the wind towers, and if they do that, they don't live here. They don't have to bear with it. And the other thing is, Fiona. If we want to leave the island, if I want to take my wife to Melbourne and back, I'm looking at at least $500 for airfares. We can't get away from it. We can't drive away. You know, in South Australia and Victoria, they have another house somewhere else 30 kilometres away where they can go to. We can't do that. We're stuck here. So if you don't like it, you'll simply have to leave. King Island farmers could be the big winners. They've been hit hard by the abattoir closure and falling milk prices. Some see the rent they'd get from having a turbine on their land literally as a windfall. In other regions, landowners have been paid as much as $10,000 a year. Beef farmers in particular stand to gain. 
they've made an offer to the beef industry here to put money towards an abattoir and continuing trying to get a feasibility study progressed with a prospectus, you know, a business plan. So if we get a business plan paid for and if the wind farm is feasible and is built, then they're going to put millions of dollars into building an abattoir. JB Swift closed the abattoir suddenly in September last year. We've got to ship them live now on a boat. Um, from $10 to get to the abattoirs, it's now 110, 115. And that's with freight equalisation. If it wasn't for freight equalisation, we'd be looking at $150 a head. And that's straight off the bottom line and that's big cost pressure. It's a lot of cattle travelling by truck and ship over a notoriously rough stretch of sea. After six months, they're getting better at it. But live cattle export is unpredictable and a disaster for the bottom line. So what sort of costs would that be for you each year? Oh, that's um, about $70,000. And I know, I know that the largest farm here is looking at over half a million. For third and fourth generation King Island beef farmers, Roger and Thor Clemens, it's gently, gently as they round up and load their prime beef onto a truck bound for the ship that will take them to a mainland Tasmanian abattoir. We're into low stress stock handling here. <laughs> We've got to be to keep our own stress levels down, I think, as well as presenting, you know, MSA graded cattle. Animal stress levels are measured at the abattoir and can also have a downward effect on prices. When the animal's slaughtered, it goes through a process of measuring the size of the eye muscle, um, the pH level, fat colour, meat colour, various few other things, and you get enough points, you get into the top groups. King Island beef producers account for 22% of Tasmania's cattle herd. On average, about 28,000 are processed each year. It's a tiny proportion of the national herd, but it's some of the country's premium beef. Live export is unpredictable and risky for the premium brand. Ultimately, um, we'd much prefer to have a, a beast that can be trucked for half an hour for processing rather than have to endure a um, boat trip, but um, you have to deal with the hand that you dealt, and at the moment, um, our option is to prepare as well as we can and make sure that the cattle um, are loaded correctly, have as little time on the journey and then arrive in as good a manner as we can. Farmers breathed a sigh of relief recently when a Tasmanian government commissioned feasibility study into an island abattoir was positive. It provides a realistic snapshot of um, uh, the challenges and the opportunities for King Island. Uh, it says that uh, an abattoir is feasible, uh, but uh, it'll cost $30 million to build uh, an export abattoir and $14 million to operate. It says a new marketing arm is integral to any new project. JB Swift says it owns the King Island brand, but legally a regional name cannot be trademarked. One of the biggest issues for any new operator is supply. It was a problem for the former abattoir. If an abattoir is to work, it needs throughput, so it needs the island commitment. And unfortunately, it probably didn't happen as well as it could have when we did have the abattoir here. I mean, there are other factors as well, but that'd be one if we had, if we even re-establish one, that'd still be an issue. Either way, any abattoir needs investors. The Tasmanian government has ruled out support. JB Swift, the former operator, has not put its hand up and is refusing to sell their mothballed King Island abattoir. Greenham's, based at Smithton on Tasmania's northwest coast, is also not interested. The interest that's uh, being garnered at the moment uh, will be forwarded on to the beef producers for their consideration. Mm, so it's really up to the, the... It's hand over to the beef producers? Well, that's right. Any potential investor is not going to take any further steps unless they can get some sort of guarantee of supply. Hydro Tasmania could be the beef industry's saviour. As the toing and froing continues, cattle will still be shipped off-island. Beef producers are seeking help with freight. 
We're looking for a $60 per head subsidy or reduction in the freight price itself. Um, we can justify it because anywhere in Tasmania is $60 or less to get to a processing plant. Um, yeah, it's a tough one. Um, Bass trade shipping's expensive. Um, yeah, uh, it's being addressed and, uh, and we're fairly positive there's going to be a reasonable outcome. Beef farmer Michael Ude is hoping for freight relief. Since the abattoir closed, his operation has become a marginal business. Despite his economic difficulties, he's one of a group of farmers against the wind farm proposal, even though he could stand to gain. I don't think it's the answer for King Island, no. I think, I think it could, could, it would destroy the island. It will, it will rip the heart out of the community. It will split the, it will divide the community. It's, it's happened, it's happening already. I, I feel very strong that it will repair itself if the towers don't go, go in here, but if the towers do, I think the community will, will divide. His anti-wind tower stance has taken a huge personal toll on his own family. My fa father's fairly strong on his opinion on it and he did make a statement that he was doing it for the grandkids and, 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 and other, you know, the future grandkids on the island. Well, none of his family want it. None of his grandkids want it. I don't understand why this, why he's so strong on it, but I probably shouldn't talk about that too much. Patriarch Peter Ude has lived on the island for 47 years. He's lived through the good times and the bad. He's worried about the island's dwindling population and its effect on infrastructure like schools, hospitals and aged care. The year I came here there was 145 dairy farms. <coughs> 40, over 40 of those was share farmers. You had a mine that was employing 450 pay packets every week. The island actually boomed because it was double the population what we are now. The island has changed, and I think in some cases, unless it's changed, we've got a situation now where there's controversy going on with the wind towers and we've got a golf course which I fully support. We've got to accept the change because I don't, I don't believe the island can keep going with the current population and hold our current infrastructure like we've got. Michael Ude and many with the No Wind Farm group are pinning their hopes on alternative economic saviours, including two proposed golf links courses. While there's been an official sod turning ceremony on one site near Curry, there's been no real development activity. An independent economic report commissioned by Taz Wind suggests King Island will be $36 million better off without the wind farm. It's basing that scenario on a wind farm having a negative impact on visitors to two international golf links courses, including this one, Ocean Dunes, just north of Curry, which is still seeking investors. Up north at the Cape Wickham development site, preliminary work has started, with some planning applications still pending. It's unknown if full-scale development will start this year or next. It's business as usual for the island's dairy farmers, producing milk for Lion and its world-renowned dairy products. They've also suffered under tough economic conditions in recent years. There's 12 dairy farms on the island these days, producing 15 million litres of milk a year, about half the amount produced 10 years ago. We've nearly all gone to beef, unfortunately, over the years um, for different, varying different reasons. Some people have uh, had struck financial trouble, some people have had labour problems and a lot of um, contracts haven't been uh, forwarded on, mainly, um, because they basically wanted less milk. So if they want less milk, farms go out until they get to the level that they want. Despite tough times, dairy farmers are split on the wind farm development. As a group, they've decided to stay out of the contentious debate. I think if we had a meeting where I said, well, guys, we've got to decide are we for it or are we against it, I think that would start an argument and that wouldn't do us any good. You know, I think that King, a lot of people on the island really need to pull their heads in and, and just be a bit more considerate of each other's opinions and just, just let the process continue and, and stop being so passionate. Because, I mean, passion's a great thing, but I think we're being a little bit over the top with it at the moment. And, 
And if we don't stick together over here, then we're going to find things aren't quite as good as they should be. You know, some people will move off the island. If it goes ahead and it divides the community, I, I, I don't want to be here. Well, I've never seen the island divided like it is at the moment. King Island is probably one of the most beautiful places, was one of the most friendliest places that I've, that I've ever been to. And, it's, and I still believe you could go back to that with a bit of common sense.